We were just talking about how to sew buttonholes with the foot number five buttonhole foot. We were talking about how you can make buttonholes and then weave ribbon through those. This is from our Stitching Cosmos online course designed for the FOF machine. And next we're gonna talk about how to sew buttons on. And we kind of used that technique as we worked with some tassels. So these are just fun uh, bunches of yarn that we've put together. We actually used a bar tack stitch to hold them and then the buttons were just added for decoration. Now look what I actually did. I actually did stitching not only side to side, but I also turned it so they actually created in a box. So each time I show you the stitch we're gonna use, which is stitch number 29 on the Foff Ambition 620. We're gonna zigzag in those holes, it'll stop, and then you're gonna zigzag in the holes behind it. And then if you wanted to make the box, you're gonna turn it and then do it again, zigzag and then zigzag. But it's not just a zigzag stitch, it has locking stitches all in the same place. So let's just go ahead and review. We'll take the buttonhole foot off, make sure your IDT is disengaged. Let's select stitch number 20. And look, if you have the I for information button pushed, where we actually are seeing what foot to use, you are noticing that there is no foot picture indicated. And that is right. We are going to just use this ankle. Also, I was doing buttonholes, so I'm going to take that little silver paddle and slide it up. It hides behind your needle threader. Awesome. And then the last thing it shows is that our feed dogs actually are lowered. And that's going to just help so they don't tap underneath your fabric and kind of jiggle the button. We don't want to move it at all. Slide your accessory box off and behind here there is a lever. Peek back there. The lever is pushed to one side. You're going to push it hard until it moves to the other side, which was to the right. Feed dogs are going down. Keep in mind, as soon as you bring those feed dogs back up when you're done, don't forget to do that. When you slide them back, they will not come up until you actually take a stitch. So don't be freaked out that your machine didn't bring those teeth back up. You just have to pretend that they did and go ahead and trust it. And so it's like taking that little leap of faith. Now let's talk about doing this sewing on a button. What? With a machine with no foot. So you actually have the, um, it's all set up to do, but how does the machine know if you're actually using a small button or a large button? So that was kind of a trick question because most, like 99% of buttons all have the same holes, even though it looks smaller on a small button as it does on a big button. You also see on your machine that it says four millimeters wide. The needle's gonna take a four millimeter wide swing, which for any time you have a slightly smaller button with weirder holes, you can adjust the stitch width right here. Notice what, what else is on the screen. It says times eight. That means that you are gonna get eight stitches back and forth, which you can, by the way, use the plus or minus buttons if you wanted more or less, but eight is usually plenty so I usually just leave it and we're about ready to stitch. Most of the time if you're doing decorative use with buttons like this we are going to stitch that button all the way to the fabric with no gap in between but if you're doing something on a garment you're going to want to have some type of separation a little shank of thread and that's where your multi-purpose tool will come in you're going to set that underneath your button line it up and we'll slide it in like I'm gonna show you. And then that will create the little spacer and leave the extra thread. So if you were buttoning a shirt, there's room for that second layer to go under the button. Trust me, if you don't do that, it's not easy to button. So here we go. We'll just do the first time without it. Um, notice that the needle is on which side? It's on the left side. Let's go ahead and turn the needle by hand into the left hole. And I'm actually stitching in the front two holes first and then once I have that held I can lower the presser foot and that's going to kind of pinch the button that's why we can do this without a foot and we can see exactly what we're doing all right there's the swing of the needle I can see I just am my hair bigger on the way I set it up I can just move the fabric just a little bit so I'm lined up with that hole and just make sure that my swing returns into the right hole so if you need to you can just jiggle the button just a little bit and then you can use the start stop button or you can step on the foot control just go ahead and stitch. It'll do the whole thing with a lock at the end. You can use the scissor button if you want to cut it and have that be completely done. Or if it's like this one where it has four holes, you can go ahead and slide back and stitch the second 
hair. So again, line up so your hole and needles line up by hand. Check the swing. Once you're there, go ahead and stitch. And before you know it, it's done. Did you like you can touch the scissor button? Let's do that again. Makes it really easy. Pull it out and everything is cut and perfect and pulled to the back side. So easy to sew buttons on. If you wanted to do like I showed you earlier, switch it and then do your two more times here and then on the back too. So sewing on buttons, super easy, give it a try and realize that the built-in stitch is there for you.